Viewer discretion is advised, more details can be found in the description. The only people that find Urban Spook a scary series are the type of people who go onto WikiHow because there were no instructions on how to open a water bottle. Urban Spook is an indie horror series created by... Urban Spook, go figure. It's a fucking boring series where every episode is the exact same thing. With every passing episode, it gets more and more shocking to the point where it makes you want to be sick all over your desk. All I could do is sit there thinking, how, what kind of fucking moron would sit there and watch this? And then I remembered what my job is. So I sat my ass down and watched all seven episodes. That's right, seven, which collectively adds up to a whopping 28 minutes. Somehow those 28 minutes felt longer than my 33 minute long video essay on Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. That's a fucking achievement. All right, since I'm bored, how about we give you a little explanation on how every episode goes, and I mean every. All right, speed run time. A disclaimer appears warning us about the horror we're about to see. Woo! Yes, it happens in every episode, and yes, it is warranted for a series that covers some pretty dark stuff. Shows a police report about a murder slash attempted murder, if you're lucky. Then it shows something shocking in a painting that goes along with the murder, except for the times it doesn't show the painting for some reason. Hmm, shock factor can't be that bad, can it? Well, if you're asking me, I think actually adding shock factor is extremely overhated. However, I have the same opinion as many people have with jump scares. Shock factor is good, as long as you're not constantly doing it to the point where the entire shock completely fades away, because once everything in your series is shocking, all of it becomes not shocking at all because you're expecting it to be shocking. Yes, big shock, I know. Ha <laughs> funny pun! So anyway, Urban Spook decides to add a shocking moment to every single episode, making it entirely unshocking. <coughs> but, pray tell, what does make a good horror series? In my opinion, there are three elements that can help make a good horror series. The first step is a bit more of a general story thing for good horror. You're going to need an interesting story and a world for the viewer to delve into. Add shock factor every few episodes, and I mean few. Try and keep it every three to seven episodes pretty much. This remains the same for jump scares. In fact, like, keep, yeah, same distance pretty much. Yeah, funnily enough, you don't need the endangerment of a child's mental or physical state. Isn't that right? Urban spook. And that's Woofer Nation's handy dandy three step guide to making a successful horror series that doesn't suck my willy. But now we have a news report from my good friend, Skinny Jim. Shocking news! Adding child sexual abuse to your story is bad? I know, this is absolutely a massive shock, but don't add child sexual abuse to your story, you fucking moron. That's right, this series features children being sexually abused then murdered. <sighs> Do I seriously need to tell you why this is wrong? If done right, a concept like this could work. But judging by the whole video so far and the fact that I had to add content warnings at the beginning, guess if it worked? Fucking no. That's what I fucking thought. I mean, to be fair, it can't be that bad. It's not like it was just added to be shocking, right? So anyways, it was added just to be shocking. Damn it. And that's where my biggest gripe with this entire series consistently comes up. It's so consistently reliant on shock factor for its scares that the shock value just isn't shocking anymore. It's like eating the same food every day. Even if pizza is your favorite food, try having it 10 days in a row and tell me you still want it again for the 11th day. If you are so bad at writing horror that you have to shock your audience every episode, then you shouldn't be making a horror series. This should be blatantly obvious advice. You can really tell, despite Urban Spook acting like his audience is full of grown-up adults, his series has done the total opposite, and it's just attracted a bunch of edgy 14-year-olds who sniff their own farts and think adding child rape to a story makes it inherently scary. 
Urban Spook has never officially posted his age anywhere, but from the way he speaks, I'd say he's about early adulthood, young adult. So well done. You're ch you're just out of childhood, and you just attracted more children, or God forbid, some autistic furries. <laughs> Thank you very much, I'll be here all night. This personally really annoys me because there are times where the series proves itself to me as genuinely compelling as a piece of media, with it being worthy of actually being discussed. Despite how horrendous I find the backstories for the paintings, the paintings themselves are genuinely incredible and he should feel legitimately proud of just how good they are. Not only that, but remember Woofer Nation's handy dandy three step plan to making a successful horror series that doesn't suck my willy? Well, I'd say he actually gets across the first hurdle. The plot is genuinely interesting and some stuff discussed in the series is genuinely scary. A killer climbing up the drain and in through your window is really campy as all hell. Sure, yeah. <laughs> but that is still genuinely a somewhat scary thought, and it is insanely disappointing that there are so many points where I can say for sure that if Urban Spook removed the shock factor, it would legitimately be good. Though, with Urban Slug's recent Twitter meltdowns, I don't think this series is going to last much longer, at least with the popularity it currently has. With more people mocking and deriding his series more than literally ever, it's pretty safe to assume that the ship has sailed, and if another sail is attempted, it's likely it's just going to sink. May I finish this video a day late, whoops.